Hey guys, this is Ray with DRP Motorsports. Welcome back once again. We still got our 24 Mustang GT here in the shop, but we're about to get it out of here. We're done with the long tube header installation and the uh, dyno sessions afterwards. And today I want to talk with you guys about what I have discovered about the factory tune on these cars and how much Ford is left on the table that we could gain if we could custom tune them. So stick around, let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome to my office. I'm here at my computer. So getting right into it. So during the process of installing long tube headers and adding K&N air, K air filters to our 24 Mustang GT, along with the dyno process of measuring, you know, power increases, I've also been data logging. I'm using HP Tuner software here. Um, so long story short, what we can see is very limited. We've only got access to a few basic PIDs right now, but you know, I can see some of the basics like engine RPM, spark advance, throttle position, sensor percentage, uh, fuel trims, that kind of thing. And it's enough information that I can see <clears throat> that has clued me in on some uh, limitations that the Ford uh, stock calibration is really holding um, power potential back with simple bolt on modification. So, in a nutshell, when you add things like high flow air filters, free flow and exhaust, you're increasing the airflow potential in and out of that engine. And that's what we've done by adding the air filters and long tube headers on our 24 Mustang. So in stock form, the engine will only see but so much airflow, okay? And Ford has the calibration set up to accept that amount of airflow and not throw up any red flags or any limitations. But since we have added high flow air filters, a free flowing exhaust, you know, with the headers, um, it's increased airflows to a point that it's actually pushing the engine to an airflow, uh, a calculated airflow that is beyond what the limiters are set at in the Ford stock calibration. So, I'll show you what's going on briefly. So this is a dyno pool, um, and it seems to be occurring, you know, about the same place since I've added the mods. But anyway, up until about 6,200 RPMs, um, the throttle blades, which is measured by this percentage here, I don't know if you can see that or not with the camera set up or not, but anyway, it's this green line right here. So basically, if you see the green line up here, that means the throttle blades are all the way up at 89.4%. Once we get about 6,200 RPMs, and keep in mind the RPM red line from the factory is 7,500. Once we get to about 6,200 RPMs, notice the throttle position. The blades start closing up and it finally closes all the way up once we get to the, uh, uh, the final uh, RPM limit. But this area here from about 6,200 to 7,500 RPMs, the blades are closing up. Why are the throttle blades closing up? Well. The engine has reached its calculated maximum airflow potential. And the ECM is saying, okay, that's all the air I want. I don't want no more. So in an effort to keep it that way, I'm gonna start closing the throttle blades up as the RPMs increase. So you see right there, we're closing up the throttle blades a good bit well before redline. And that's power left on the table. Now, obviously, um, you know, there's other things that increase power. You know, when we talk about tuning these cars in any kind of form, naturally aspirated or boosted, I mean, you can play with air fuel ratios, you can play with spark advance, you can play with uh, torque management, uh, you can play with camshaft uh, phasing. There's a lot of things that you can play with to increase power. But this is a hard limit right here. This is a big, big brick wall in the way. So, you know, we can throw all these mods to these cars and uh, with a factory calibration, but once it gets to that airflow limit, it's going to start closing the throttles and say, nope, that's all I want. So, guys, if we could custom tune these cars, it would make a huge difference, even with just a few bolt-ons. Think about this. Okay, this Uncorrected with the long tube headers on my 24 Mustang GT, um, it made 440 wheel horsepower um, just yesterday. So, 
if I could keep the throttle blades all the way open to red line, I would dare say I could probably pick up another 20, 25 wheel horsepower. So, I mean, I'd be right at 450, 460 wheel horsepower if I could just simply keep the throttle blades all the way up and through the entire RPM range. Now, there's other things. I mean, uh, if I could lean it out a little bit, um, if I could throw a little bit more spark advance if the octane allows. A big one is if I could change the stoic air fuel ratio and run a true E85 tune on this car. Now, that brings me to another point. I know a lot of guys are running uh, ethanol blends like uh, up to about E30. I think I've heard maybe E40 blends. I'm sure there's people that's put straight E85 in there, but what they're doing is relying on Ford's logic of the long-term fuel trims to be able to adjust things, uh, richen things up enough so that it can compensate for um, running a higher ethanol blend. That's not a good idea. Anytime we tune these cars, you want to see these uh, fuel trims to be no more than plus or minus, really truly plus or minus 5%. Plus or minus 10% is okay, but it's really pushing it, you know, in the long-term trends. Um, but when you're talking about pushing ethanol blends, you know, 30, 40, 50% more or higher, you're really pushing these fuel trims way beyond what the forward, uh, uh, um, uh, electronics, um, and strategy really allows to run safely. You've got other things that, that, that come into play too. And you've got like learn octane, uh, how it affects spark advance, that sort of thing. But keep in mind that, that when, when the Ford Logic takes over and makes these adjustments in fuel trims for uh, abnormal ethanol blends than what it was set up for, but which, by the way, it's set up for up to an E10 blend from the factory. Beyond that, you're pushing it beyond Ford's Logic. Um, it takes a while for it to adjust um, uh, your fuel ratios and your spark advance. So when you go through e uh, E30, E40, something like that, in one of these cars with the Ford calibration, um, you're running it, um, you could be running it, the air fuel ratio way off, you could be running the spark advance way off for that fuel blend because for a little while, because it takes a while for the the uh, the logic to learn the, the changes that you've introduced. So it's not an instantaneous reception of those changes and uh, the computer making appropriate adjustments immediately. It takes a while for it to learn, learn those trends and adjust. So you're really putting your, your engine and other things at risk by introducing a new fuel blend and then just going out and hammering the throttle. That's, that's a no-no. If you're going to run, you know, E20, E30 blends in these cars, please take your time, uh, after you switch to fuel, um, you know, drive leisurely at a normal casual pace for you know i don't know 10 15 miles at least before you think about hammering the throttle down because it needs to learn some values because you're not you know you don't have a true tune in the car to do that but anyways i'm done talking about that but i just wanted to let you guys see a little bit of what i see to let you know that if we could just please custom tune these cars they would pick up a lot with simple bolt-on mod modifications in. And I think one of the key things there is that new dual, dual throttle body intake. That's basically double the potential airflow that the old setup would have. So, I mean, I really think full bolt-on setups with a true custom tune would approach what we used to would have to switch over to a Cobra Jet setup to achieve the same amount of power. I mean, honestly, I think with E85, um, high flow air filters, long tube headers, and a custom tune on these new 24 Mustangs, I think we could see 480, 500 wheel horsepower with ease, in, you know, on the MT82 car, I mean, probably go over 500 wheel horsepower, which is, you know, full bolt on set up in the E85, but we can't do it. And that brings me to another point, another topic of discussion that I'll finish out this video with. Why did Ford lock these ECMs so that we couldn't tune them? or what couldn't tune them easily. Well, I mentioned it before, and this is just assumption, this is not known fact, but I do know some known facts being in the tuning industry in the diesel side of things. And I do know that the government put pressure 
on a diesel engine manufacturer to change their security protocols in the ECM so that they couldn't be tampered with by the aftermarket. And this manufacturer did make a change and they thought it, thought they did a pretty good job, but the aftermarket found a back way to get around the security and program those ECMs well. As a result of that, once the manufacturer discovered that the aftermarket was tuning um, these newer ECMs and these in these diesel engines that they brought potential lawsuits against the, um, the the tuning manufacturers. Now, why would they do that? Well, probably because of pressure from the government. Uh, what's what's pressure from the government? Well, we all do do know that the government doesn't want emission stuff tampered with, um, and we all do know that the government has the potential to find manufacturers, regardless of any auto engine maker. But like Ford, the government could potentially put financial pressure on Ford to lock these ECMs. And I think that's probably what has happened. Do I know that for a fact? No, but that's just my, that's just my best guess based upon known facts that I know from the diesel side of things. Now, how does that affect custom tuning and the potential uh, introduction of custom tuning? Well... Ford has probably done, and we do know that they have done a very good job of locking these ECMs so that it can't be tuned with an aftermarket tune. Basically, dumb it down, any tune that's introduced into the ECMs on these new 24 and up Ford vehicles uh, has to have a digital signature that only Ford has the knowledge on, of how to do. They have, the calibration file has to have this dig digital signature from Ford um, in order for the ECM to accept it when you program it in. Otherwise, it'll just put it in a lockdown mode. Um, so Ford's done a good job there. Now, with regard to custom tuning, again, um, tuning companies that make uh, tuning devices like we use and the software like we use to tune cars and trucks are trying to reverse engineer that, okay? So, but Ford might not have left a window open for reverse engineering. They might have done a really, really good job, and the only way to custom tune is to have that Ford digital signature. Well, I'm sure Ford has got that locked down um, very tight and very secret, and probably made it so it can't be reverse engineered. So what I'm saying is, without rambling too much more, is if somebody... Any of these known tuning companies were to um, figure out a way to custom tune these new ECMs, it probably would make Ford very suspicious. And Ford at that point might would be uh, willing to take legal action against a tuning company for um, marketing a means to tune them aftermarketly. So... It's really kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. I mean, a tuning company, for example, uh, like I'm using right here, if they were to figure out a way to reverse engineer it that they could get around the security protocols without using Ford's digital signature, then, you know, they could bring that to market and probably not have any, uh, you know, too much pushback from Ford. But if they, you know, reverse engineer and figure out Ford's digital signature and use Ford's digital signature to be able to unlock these ECMs and tune them, then Ford's probably going to sue them. Why would Ford want to sue them after all these years of, of allowing access to their ECMs? Well, probably governmental pressure. And that governmental pressure could be in the form of potential fines or um, a form of um, removing subsidy, subsidies. I don't know. But there's ways the government can put pressure on a product manufacturer like Ford to keep everything locked down. So I'm through rambling. I hope I brought out some interesting topics for discussion today. Um, let me know your thoughts. As always, guys, thank you for following along. God bless each and every one of you. And we will see you again soon.